In the bottom right, as the Red Terran, it's Gumiho. Alright, so Gumiho went with, uh, again, stressing like a kind of standard Terran vs. Protoss opener that time. Go for the Wood of Mine drops and all these other things, but just took care not to rush out of the base as fast as possible. And that really did seal the deal for Hearthstone um, at the start of that. I, I really don't think Hearthstone chose a bad tactic. I mean, when you watch someone like MC beat Bomber with the exact same moves, you got to think that's got to be a good tactic worth trying. But uh, for Hearthstone, say he is now on his last life. If he falls here, he's out of the tournament. And we'll have uh, Gumiho versus Lobo in the finals. Alternatively, he may still try and bring this back. I mean, at the end of the day, Harsom's a really good player through and through, whether it's through cheese or not, whether it's macro or otherwise. It's not like he's going to go down without a fight. It was pretty much like a build order cross. Like, not a hard counter necessarily, because it's always possible the Wood of Mine isn't there. Doesn't get the Oracle kill. But it was an unlucky situation for him. And the question is, is Gumiho going to do the same thing again? As a poor, it's kind of... It seems to be his comfort zone, going back to the uh, Wood of Mine drop, either one base or two base. Well, I think this might be the one map we, if at all, we see like a proper mech build out of one. Because let's not forget, you can actually abuse the tanks nicely on this map too, with several different positions in several different locations. Although, uh, just to recap the bets real quick, guys, spawning, or not spawning, sorry, ugh. Partoof's bet on Hearthstone worth 7,117, uh, and uh, the bets on Gumiho were just shy of 26,000, so uh, should be pretty good payouts either way. Well, the guys are still on gas, and Harsum is going to see this, so at the very least he's going to know a you know, factory is going to come down, and actually saw it, so there you go. Yeah, back at home, he's still sitting on one gas himself. Not rushing out for that fast as possible Stargate or Twilight Council. I am, ah, just going back on this, like, I don't know if Gumio would go for mech, or even just tanks again. Uh, I would definitely love to see it, because it's a different way to play, and it's always cool seeing anything but what we see a thousand times over regurgitated in StarCraft 2, but I, uh, I, I don't know. At the same time, you know, you're so close to just locking the series down. Do you play safe and standard, or do you just try something a little bit weird? Yeah. I'm really interested to see if Gumi is going to go for the Hellions, like Overgrowth, or just the plain old Wood of Mind Drop. Um, two different ways to deal with that. I feel like the Hellions make it... As you said, as you keep saying, whenever it happens, like, Protoss just like, oh, Hellions, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. There's only, like, a small handful of Protoss plays we've seen firsthand that, like, they do the clutch thing where you build the pylon, or you've already got the Sim City set up ahead of time. Every yeah. other Protoss is like, huh, wait, I thought you only used these versus Zerg, what's going on? Yeah, exactly. So it is a Wood of Mine drop, though, and this will be a little more straightforward. Uh, that's probably what Harsom was thinking was going to be the case, anyways. And, you know, as such, he'll, you know, Look at the time and be like, okay, it's around like six, seven minutes. So she's got this wood on my job now. And uh, hopefully, I have a robo and an observer almost ready or actually ready to go. Well, due to the order of uh, operations here, the starport's not down at the fastest, sickest timing possible. And it's not going to be a wood of mine that hits before anything's available and ready. But um, for Harsom's sake, I was going to say, okay, it'd be weird to see him go for the Twilight Council because you're kind of expecting this to happen. If someone does Wood of Mine drops once, you're kind of like chancing a game to you. But if they do it twice in a row, or if they got Wood of Mine's out early twice in a row, you know you're going to want that robot earlier. And this isn't, of course, for the Immortal or anything like that. You want the Observer out. You need detection. It's the number one yeah. bane of Protoss in the early game. Getting detection down is a pain. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, you just pull the probes for a little while. Maybe you kill the Wood of Mine when it actually drops. It's not the end all be all if you don't have an Observer in place automatically, but it's much easier. Well, uh, I'll get this medevac on the way. A couple more marines smashed up with this. I wonder if he'll walk a second one of mine across the map or if he'll just drop both of them. Uh, this one does go to the mineral line for the time being. Safe and sound. Make sure you no know oracle plays can catch him off guard. And that's what I like about Gumio. Like, he does play it without playing a little too reckless. He's making the right moves. Ensures that he doesn't lose the game to a bit of greed. And mm. uh, moving out at a pretty appropriate time. Just if he's going to get a bit of a scout off too to see what's waiting for him. Uh, really not a lot, to be honest. Uh, there's not a cannon here at the natural base. Mothership 4 does, of course, have the energy to overcharge at least once. But he's seen no stalkers, he's seen no sentries, and this is a pretty nice uh, signal to just go for it. Yep. Oh, Mothership 4, you may not want to... Well, I guess she wouldn't really help out the much otherwise, but <laughs> maybe not attacking the rocks right now is a good idea. Oh, she's in range for the overcharge. So Which is, yeah, it's most important. She uh, shouldn't take down the marines herself anyways. 
But it does pop the overcharge down here. She won't have another one for the main, but the blink stalkers are there, so very nicely done. Where's the medevac at? It's at the main of Harstam, and he just cut a bunch of probes. Are you oh. serious, Rifkin? Sorry, I'm horrible. I'm horrible. Oh, God. Eight probes die. I was looking for it on the units tab. I didn't see it, but I guess it's because it got picked off as I clicked the U button. So I was like, wait, did he not? Did he what? But uh, with that observer out, shuts this down. This doesn't get out of hand. For Harstam's sake, look at the probe count. 37 probes to 31 SCVs. I mean, this this is hardly him getting screwed by this attack. No. It's kind of an equalizer, really. Any count for mules. I mean, maybe Guma is just like a little bit, like economy. I don't like I should check income. Yeah, it is just a little bit ahead in income, but yeah, not devastating for Hearthstone. No, certainly not. But Gumiho, what with two more medevacs behind this? Uh, not at all afraid of you know, paranoia of uh, Colossus. Gonna go for that four count like we typically see. Uh, give those medevacs out for some drops. And if, if Hearthstone is forced to split right now, He's gonna have an okay attack on one side, but it's that it's that guesstimation. You know, do you leave one Colossus in the main or the natural? How how tight do you keep your stalkers clamped up? I mean, it's gonna be really difficult to respond to this, and while all of this is gonna be going on, Gumio locks down a third. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at this point, Harsim tried one like you know aggressive move, and it was really cheesy. So like take, taking advantage of the fact that you're gonna you know Harsim's probably gonna play safe, macro oriented not gonna attack you go for that faster third on location for sure all right well he doesn't know the attacks coming just yet but he will see it with the observer in just a moment's time good to have this observer spread uh, of yep. course it's not the craziest one we get like four observers all over the map and there's always joyce about pig baby back at wcs making like eight or seven or something ridiculous but uh more to the point like i'm, I'm surprised we don't at least have an odd pylon place out there not for warping potential but even just to see stuff coming from a super yeah. far away because now that he's in the blind spot of ours he just have to move out a little bit he's a little bit scared doesn't quite know what's going on but yeah. uh, double drop saying towards that main some good positioning here around all of the tech sounds <laughs> a little dangerous what what oh he's gonna stay on the pylons okay i was gonna say he missed the cliff a little bit but yeah if he picks up one pylon it's not too bad does it for what is almost free one marine yeah. does flounder on the ground corpse on fire I mean, he's got to wait for more Marauders who really takes on that army Ooh. head on at the first plan. Yeah, just a couple of units take down one. It one does pull all the probes off the mineral line. Three. It's quite a bit of lost mining. Yeah. A little unnecessary, I can't lie. But, let's scare that. So I like the way he split this up. Rather than even Colossus in the main waiting for the medevacs to unload, he's actually left the stalkers up here to try and catch the medevacs before they unload. Uh, Blink's not quite done yet, though, so getting underneath this and stopping it's not going to be so easy as normal. Meanwhile, we do have a lot of uh, marauders heading towards that natural base. These Colossus could be in some trouble. We oftentimes see players like Major just drag and drop marauders on top of Colossus, and we watch them just <laughs> die. Gumio changing up a style a little bit, ramping up the pressure here, gonna drop in two locations, and if the drop of the main doesn't work, that third is now a target as well. So, decent shot goes off on this, and of course he's gonna pull back away. Colossus, don't die, I think it's gonna one of the key things, but a couple of probes did go down. Third base and under attack from the drop from earlier, still not fully cleaned up, and this is one of those rare times to start crafting. Oh, did he not? Oh, did he not bring the observer that one of mine still lives? Nope. Oh, yep. That's gonna get oh. maybe a couple of kills. It might go off on like the uh, oh stalkers. No why? <laughs> oh no! What's it gonna go off on? Oh, five probe kills. Not too shabby. Uh, for one of my course that already gone off once. Get six kills in total. Not too bad. Jump out of heading off through the southern attack. And of course, you must look at these ones up here. I don't know how far he's gonna go, but this is the one time I guarantee you, Harston kind of wish he had a Phoenix or two in play. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. Also delaying, like, what otherwise, you know, we consider that Deadwing game. I think it got uh, Templar Archives around pretty much now. Um, but, of course, that was much faster third. Uh, actually, <laughs> as I say it, he throws on Templar Archives. Okay, whatever. But the High Templar is going to be useful in defending these drops as well. I'm a little surprised he actually brought these Medivacs all the way back home. I thought he was just going to go back to the third when he attacks the main, you know, split the forces. But, um, okay, now he starts sending to the front lines. <clears throat> There's a lot of Medivacs, by the way. Not a lot of Vikings in play just yet. Uh, so this does get a little bit scary, where if Harstam thwarts this, he's got a really good follow-up to the point that uh, Gumiho's not got anything to stop this Colossus. Hmm. Hmm. Medivacs up here in the north. Big attack coming here from the just front side. Uh, you missed the observer. Yeah. Big, oh, well. big, big drop coming, though. Colossus are going to be able to respond, but not before a couple of the probes die. Cannon going to buy a little bit of time. 
And we, of course, just see if those drops in the main decide to come down at the same time. Stalkers in the main, of course, are routed over here. Shot goes off on the Mothership Core. It doesn't oh. quite die, but the Colossus annihilate the army count, but now dropping towards the main. Feedbacks go down, and Hard Stump is going to pick off that medevac. Only a single Marine gets out. Again, a great defense. Loses probes, but he kills so much of Gumiho's army. How many medevacs just died there as well? I mean, this Great. is a situation oh. where you usually can't replenish them. You have to swap to Viking tech at this point. Yeah, in total, not sure, but that was uh, that was not the best of from drop I've ever seen. In fact, it was absolutely no. terrible. But Gumiho takes, or he still has a little bit of an army lead, definitely an SEV lead right now. Oh. I guess that kind of stuck. Yeah. Uh, that's a bit unfortunate, but I, I, I got, I can't. Yeah, as cool as the defense was here, you know, Gumiho got squished in and that sucked. Whatever. That feedback, the fact that he was able to do that while focusing at the Nashville at the same time, that was really sick moves out of Hearthstone. Yeah, yeah. But having those eyes, like the Pusa and Phoenix had eyes on that, so that was really, really cool, really important to see. Uh, Gimeo does stop in his Viking production for just a little while and gets four medevacs. Ghost Academy again. We'll see if actual ghosts come out this time. <laughs> right? I mean, I'm not saying that to be like condescending. It's a serious question. Because uh, Hearthstone's already revealed Templar text there. You know, those feedbacks went down on the medevacs. He knows Storm's potentially out of any second now. Does get the observer, observer this time. Yeah. <laughs> the observer who lived no longer anymore. Uh, mm. There's Hallucinating Phoenix over here. Possibly could just swing back over the army and keep an eye on what's going on. Upgrades looking okay. You know, it's it's two versus one one with both now doing uh, double upgrades. As we get later into the game, well, actually, we got three ghosts coming out. Whoa, hold the phones. Uh, but as we get later into this game, I mean, this is kind of Harsom's comfort zone. The, the, the late game, the macro game. I mean, we saw him play 45 minute long games versus Kass not too long ago. So it's it's not a situation where I think he's in trouble as this goes on, but uh, his, his upgrades keeping up as well. Going to the plus three weapons or armor, rather, uh, mixed with these storms. Those zealots are going to be so hard to kill. Yeah, yeah. Yumeo does start those upgrades. Got the engineer base just a little bit earlier. I don't know really what Gumi is trying to do with this position, but it's different. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I guess the Colossus really can't take on that army. Yeah, it's, it's one of those weird things. Like, harsom has got the tools to take, like, a fight if it was just, like, you know, open terrain, no cliffs, anything, you know, A move into A move. But he doesn't, and that's not how it's going to go. And Gumi was trying to, like, pick off, you know, assimilators for free, pylons for free. Just use the cliff to his advantage while he bulks up and gets his max up as well. His upgrades are, I think he knows his upgrades are really far behind at this point, too. Like, the possibility of even trying to take on Zealots without plus two weapons, at this point, really unlikely. I mean, the, He's uh, really... Uh, <laughs> I would say that he's looking to catch this Colossus, but they don't actually, they're not able to walk down that ramp. So. No, and if the Vikings dive in, that's where they see the storms come into effect. So it is a really awkward stalemate over here on the left side where Kumi was putting a lot of pressure on him for just an assimilator. <laughs> yeah, but he's buying so much time. I mean, this is all yeah. harsome having to defend with his entire army. And he gets a fourth, he gets those upgrades. Actually, he's getting one of those perfect Terran armies that is like a lot of ghosts and a lot of Vikings. This is where it does get a little bit scary, though, because Harsom only really has to deal with one of the two things. If you kill all the Vikings, obviously the Colossus can be a little bit stronger. If you kill all the Ghosts, then, okay, you got Storms available to you. But I think one of the key things is that neither of those units, Ghosts or Vikings, are really good as a follow-up unit. It's still, like, the Marauders and Marines are still going to be the core of the army for Gumiho. And if he loses too much on the in-between while he's dancing between the Storms and the Colossus, it's not going to really matter what's left over as far as tech units, because Harsom's going to walk all over him. So this Marine Marauder portion of the army... Well, it might not seem so significant because a lot of the emphasis is going to be on picking off the Vikings versus the Colossus or the Ghost versus the Templar. That's probably the most important thing for Gumiho. That he keeps enough of this alive to actually kill afterwards. <coughs> uh, fourth base for Harsom is going to prove, prove to be a really nice focal point for engagements. We do, of course, have some Zells going through the backside to look for some counterattack damage, but uh, also defense against the Marauders on the left side of the map, too. 2-2 well, finishes up for Yumiho, and he has that uh, center tower now, which you don't usually see here, but it's pretty good. <coughs> yeah, provides a lot of coverage, but he's also sneaking around the right side of the map. He's tearing down some of these rocks. Uh, I don't know if he's just chasing down the zealot or what, but I thought he was setting up for like a really, really long counterattack. <laughs> Would have been cool to see for certain. Um, are you okay over there, by the way? Oh, I'm dying. I know that feeling, so I just thought I'd check. Uh, but Ghost of the Front Lines, I mean, they don't have to EMP Templar. You EMP Stalkers, you EMP Zealots, you remove the shields from this Colossus. All of a sudden, the Vikings only need two shots instead of three. I mean, this is going to be really hard-pressed with so many Ghosts in play for Harsom to just move into a fight. Move into a concave. I mean, it's, it's borderline suicidal. Yeah. Big counterattack, though, at the third. 
And that's why you usually see the Sedge Tower not at the fourth. You know, it's cool because it sees the army, and the army is the biggest deal, but you also want to see these counterattacks towards your main and third. He just rips that bunker apart like nothing at all. And with those plus three armor upgrades, as we see, Marauders just not the best at dealing with Zealots. I mean, they'll kill no. them eventually, but look at this. They've taken so many shots in the face. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is well worth it. It's actually uh, warping in from across the map, too, but a long con working out for Harsom. Give me a chance to go around the army, but this could be, you know, I mean, it seems like a good idea, but it could be really bad. He could be forced into a position where he couldn't micro back. Yeah, I'm really, I'm digging all the, oh, there's Cloak on the Ghost! Here's the Observers, though, so he'll see these. Uh, Storm's going down on top of the Vikings as well, but, oh, very expensive trades for both players. Meanwhile, those cannons didn't quite stop the army, so he's going to stim in and try and pick off the Nexus. Colossus can't quite get an engagement point because there's so many Vikings to be chasing. Not a lot of stalkers or Storms left to pick them off. Oh, oh Colossus Julia might just, just have collapsing. this. I mean, all the Ghosts are still alive. Usually they die in a suicide attempt to kill the High Templars, but, <sighs> but they shoot out very nicely. I really want to see that nuke come into play, but Gumio, you know, while he does kill that base horse and takes another, kind of zerking it up, so to speak, uh, buying a little bit more time, picks off the last couple of Vikings, and that one Colossus looks like it did oh, fall, it sadly. Yeah, now both players are starting to lose those uh, high-tech units, you know, the Vikings, the Ghost, the Storm, yeah, the there's Colossus. Two storms. There's two Storms actually behind this. He'll push this off. He'll save this base. Oh, another Storm for the left side. Didn't even see that one. Another Storm waiting to go along the front lines. There we go. On top of the Marauders. No Medivax left to heal this damage. So these Storms are hurting a lot more. The, Zeal the Zealots, they charge forward. They execute all of these low-health units, and Harsim's going to hold on to this base. Oh, Gimeo probably should not have committed towards that, towards the last, but there was an attack at the third as well that just oh, killed all Academy. of the SCVs. They not the, the nuke, nuke comes before. down, though. Yeah, Harsim's going to pull away is. from this. Oh, he does. Yeah. Nukes are always cool to see, folks, but sadly, they are usually not that impactful. Uh, perhaps could have launched that towards the natural instead? I don't know, but... Uh, cool attack. Uh, Doesn't lose the Ghost Academy, though. Really key, he repairs this. Uh, of course, Ghosts, EMPs, all these very important things moving forward. Yeah, just... I mean, the worker's code is actually pretty even. Uh, but, of course, with both players on so many bases, replenishing workers is not that big of a deal. They are trading out, however. I mean, that was a really big fight, so there is no bank. And Gumiho, you know, if Harsum had tried to counterattack immediately, that nuke could have been the difference in surviving or not, but <clears throat> not necessary. I mean, the nuke's always cool to see, but you rarely see it actually get used for damage. I think, like, was it Journey yeah. versus Grubby's the last time I ever saw a nuke actually do damage? <laughs> Basically, the, like, they're like the Terran force builds towards the end of the game. Yeah, big big engagement areas you don't want to walk into, big yeah. ways to zone out methods of attack, but um, Medivac saying towards the main. Harsum is rushing to try and defend this. Gotta stop oh. these Marines in the middle lines. They're losing a lot of probes for this. We got three medevacs coming over here to the right side too. Harsum perhaps may have been split a little too much. Dark Templar starting to warp in though. Dark Templar might just be saving him, but he's gonna lose so many probes before any of this gets fully cleaned up. And Harsum so is just struggling things. to get anywhere. Anywhere! There's so many things happening. His army doesn't know where to go. The DTs are gonna be in the main, so he tries to go to the fourth. Oh, that's already it. dead. This there falls are DT and so in the natural for Gumiho, though, and it looks like they were cleaned up, but not after killing 16 more SCVs. This has just been a struggle all over the place. The Dark Shrine does get picked off. Arsum loses the space over here to the right. His main base isn't really mining anymore, but he's lost so many probes through this. At the same time, for Gumiho, though, down to 34 workers himself isn't that impressive. But he's got the power of mules, and that's gonna bring him back into this a lot better than it will for Harsum. Yeah, and, and five command centers, when he wants to replenish SCVs, he definitely can. Scan's going off, picking up the last couple Dark Templar by the looks of it. Lifts the orbital, make sure it doesn't die. Harsum, of course, not really producing more probes. I can't say it's a terrible choice, because at this point in the game, you want to have bigger army supply, but he doesn't have a bank. Uh, he doesn't have yeah. income. No bank, and Ooh. you're not even maxed out, so, like, <laughs> losing probes is just flat out bad right now. Yeah, there we go. Now you going to start reproducing them. Uh, it's got a lot of chronos, so I can, he can start making up the damage, I suppose. But now it's a low income situation for both players. And I think in these sort of scenarios, this is when your tech units start coming in to be a little more important. Where you're trading out energy for army supply. You know, landing a storm or an EMP or hell, even snipes. But uh, neither player really with any, any I guess Harsim's the only one who's really got anything to go over with these storms. Yeah. Yumiho is just going with like bare bones units, you know, just, just bio, no ghosts, no vikings. And this well, planetary gets trucked, but at the same time, he unloads once again towards the north. Got a big army trying to trade this out. For Harsim's sake, this is looking to be borderline a base trade, and I don't know if that's going to be his best choice. There's no Mothership Core. There's no recall potential. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, obviously, Harsim wins with how much, uh, like, the Colossus and... If it comes to the army, like the army. Yeah. Right, exactly, but it's the Terran that's going to win out in a base trade. They can lift, yeah. and they have Benavax. 
Harsom coming in strong, takes out another planetary fortress. At the same time, Gumio takes out the natural base. Did Harsom have any probes? That is the big question. Uh -huh. He's got to get something out to build a building outside of his own base. No, 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 no. There's three. This two one of the third probes. would be able to get out. I don't know about these two. These are the last three one. probes. Yeah. Gotta actually, stop he doesn't. Finding gas. He doesn't have money. Yeah. He he can't actually build anything else. Like, oh, he, could, he, he really couldn't throw out a pylon okay. or an assimilator or nothing. But at the same time, he's rushing home to defend. And Gumiho's getting his base wrecked by Zealots. The natural base just got cleared out. Zealots with plus two weapon upgrades are nothing to be shy of. And this army in the main. Oh, it's clumped up. It's perfect for storms. Nah, if he's got to get out of there. Can he get out of there? Does this all fit in four medivacs? I don't oh, know. Oh, he's going to lose. He's going to lose his whole army. And I think Harsom wins this base trade as a consequence. Yep. It's It was weird, but... There's no whoa, production whoa, wait, for anybody wait. at this point. He can no no, Yumiho can tie. Right? That's true. He could always float off and be a, a jerk bag in the bottom left or something. <laughs> <laughs> he absolutely Actually, can. Actually, being able to reestablish the command center means he can be one. If he can be one, he can start producing units again. Harsum still has a really large army supply, and he's got enough tempo left where storms could be a problem and a choke. He also yeah. pulled the zealots back out of the main because he didn't want to lose too much for this, but. It's definitely not over yet, but this is getting really tense for both sides. He's also looking for those medivacs. He knows they're somewhere on the right side of the map. The stocks are going to intercept at least three of them, and two of them oh, have units inside ghost. of them. Yeah, that was like his last like emergency unit, I guess you could call it. Oh, as um, he starts consulting his forces, though. I mean, look at this. This is going to be Gumiho forced to fight. Oh, he's going to move the. Oh, he's going to move the barracks to provide a little bit of the same city to choke out the zealots. Yeah, this is really yeah, cool. Yeah. It, I mean, this is the last stand in every every way. I mean, he's mining again, but it's just mules. Yeah, the storms are going to be what's really, like, you know, the kicker here. But he's so spread out that... I don't, I don't know. know. He can it... really get those temples up the ramp safely. He does leave a couple in the right. back. I like this. He knows there's always the danger of an EMP. Oh, okay. Quick spreads out of Gumiho. Yeah, he's, this it... barrack placement is so nice. Yeah, and he's putting all of the money that he's making, like, or a lot of it, into Vikings. Realizing those Colossus are really what's going to be the stable damage. Yeah. You know, storms will run out and he can dodge them. He's lost Archons at this point, so there's no buffer for the army. Harsom's army supply is looking a little bit scary. He's a little bit scarce, quite frankly, but Gumio's still so spread out. It's going to be really hard to just abuse that area of effect damage. Another Colossus joins the front lines. I don't know where or how this guy came here. Uh, Harsom collecting every bit of unit from the map that he can. Pick up the last couple of Vikings. The Colossus oh, are being stimmed oh. upon by those Marauders. One's going to fall. Two are going to fall. Oh, Harsom's going to take out and Gumio will clutch the victory in game number four. Oh, boy. So 3 1 ends up being the total score as he knocks Harsom down. And we're going to have a little bow versus Gumiho finals. Terran versus Pro Jaws yet again. But a fantastic series. And I think a lot closer than anyone would have expected. For Harsom's sake, he played that out really well. Uh, for Gumiho's sake, like, you know, he's he's happy he won. But there's no way he's like, man, I, easy peasy. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Um, in fact, every time he came to the lobby, there was like a little bit of a chat and, of course, respect for Harsom. But all right, so Harsom's going to fall to third and fourth place. Um, I don't know the order in which that place is, to be honest, but the, him and Impact will both walk away from this tournament with $100. But now we go for the big money, guys. Essentially a, a big fat show match, if you will. $500 for first place, $300 for second. Gumiho versus Little Bow. Um, we are going to take a small intermission here, guys, because I know that uh, Zombie